Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is a game from the 2005 MTEL Masters between Veselin Topalov and Ruslan Ponomaryov. This game acts as a very good example of an attacking play, as can be seen with just uh, the final score sheet. The game lasting only 30 moves, and we really do get to see very sharp play uh, very quickly in this game. So Topalov on the white end, opening up with d4, Ponomaryov knight f6. After c4, e6, we're going with a queen's Indian, this b6, looking for a queenside fianchetto. White doing similar for their kingside bishop, and now bishop to a6, targeting c4. Since this bishop is now looking forward to being deployed to g2, it's not going to be there to conveniently watch over this c4 square. So white conveniently defends it, b3. I say convenient because not only is it defending the pawn, but maybe the bishop wants to now make use of this diagonal. So I don't know if it's really that much of an inconvenience, but we have bishop b4 at this point. Bishop d2 to block, and then the bishop goes back. So the quick summary with these two pivots right here, um, this check is just thrown in because this black is wanting that bishop to be placed on d2 rather than its home square. Um, this bishop is a bit awkwardly placed on d2. If it really does want to get on this main diagonal, it'd have to go to c3, where it's certainly going to be more accessible to the black pieces namely a knight landing on, e, on that e4 square. So after uh, the bishop goes back, we have more development on the white end. Knight c3, black castles, in rook to c1. I'm not sure what the big difference is between the two right here. I mean, like, there's rook c1, there's, there's pawn to e4, there's bishop to g2. I think rook to c1 is taking into account that there might be quick pressure being placed on this c4 square, and so this rook is just getting in position to watch over it. In fact, white at this point can already be anticipating a black pawn being placed to that d5 square. And in the event that that is played, white could just capture and then there you go, you have a half open file for that rook. So certainly a purposeful square for that piece and uh, black is just going to follow up now with c6 preparing this d5 advance. After e4, d5, we have e5. A great change has just occurred in the pawn structure. And with this white pawn on the e5 square, that right there can already be the beginning of an attack against the black king. Because it's very worthwhile to take note of the following. Um, just generally speaking in a game of chess, a king knight on the f3, f3 square and f6 square um, will often act as excellent defenders of your own king side. And so not having that square available for that knight might subject you to an attack. And that's exactly what we see in a very, very direct way in this particular game. So we have knight e4, centralizing the knight, but it really cannot be maintained. White puts immediate pressure on it with their bishop, which is a little bit maybe awkward looking because you do this g3 move with the intention of playing bishop to g2, but certainly you have to take into account uh, the specifics of the position and right now uh, black is just placing their knight uh, on that e4 square a square that's in your territory on your four ranks of the chessboard let's say and so taking immediate action and putting a question to that piece certainly makes sense and so uh, additionally this bishop is now pointing down at the h7 square and we'll see how purposeful this turns out to be so uh, the knight has to give itself up Knight takes on c3, rook takes, and now c5. There's a couple of reasons maybe behind this particular advance. One, striking at the center. Two, it's vacating c6 for that knight. And three, um, well, I think I said two initially, but there's there's many, many reasons here. The bishop can always maybe go back to this b7 square and try and take over this corner-to-corner -corner diagonal, that main diagonal right there. Uh, seeing now that this bishop has decided to go elsewhere and focus on the h7 square. So, after this c5 advance, we have uh, white just taking on c5 first. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is because white really is not wanting to have their knight uh, have, have to recapture on that square. It would just be accessible to, let's say, that black queen at some point. You know, like if, if just castle or something could have takes, 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 and then before you know it, this knight is in trouble. So just getting out of any of that sort of nonsense, white just takes on c5. 
after the recapture. Uh, we don't have routine-like play at this point. So, so forget about the natural well. We have an open position. In open position, we need to get our king's castled. No, not in this game. We have h4 of all things. Uh, so certainly a very aggressive move. This rook is actually already contributing to this position in a great way. And natural developing moves like, let's say, knight to c6 are punished immediately with moves like bishop takes, king takes, knight g5. If the king goes back, we have queen h5 looking for mate on h7. This is a uh, Greek gift sacrifice, you know, that, that bishop takes on h7 type of move, slightly um, along those lines, certainly, with the sacrifice on h7 and the knight playing to g5, allowing for the queen's clearance to that h5 square. So with the mate threat on that h7 square, there really isn't anything convenient. You could take out the knight, but there we go. The rook finally comes to life, and there is no running away because this pawn puts a, a stop to that flight square for the king. Mate will ensue on h8. So there's that's this is the main threat. With this with this h pawn's advance, this is preventing knight c6. And so uh, seeing that, black plays h6. And so when you move a pawn in front of your king, uh, if you move a pawn off of a light square, that implies your light squares are weakened in some sense. And so white is taking action by playing bishop to b1, looking for a battery along this b1 to h7 diagonal. So uh, sensing danger here, this is where black feels it necessary to uh, press forward with their f-pawn, looking for maybe some lateral defense, maybe the rook bumping up, and maybe just trying to shut down this diagonal altogether but white will not have any of that instead just captures on that f6 square after the recapture the bishop is hitting the rook but it doesn't matter uh, Tupalov does not care about this rook right now the idea here is going to be to try and uh, chase this king away and go for some sort of an attack at this point we see d4 but just running quickly with what would happen exactly or at least one thing that can happen we could have the queen giving check after the king runs out we could just have bishop takes bishop here and with moves of bishop takes pawn queen takes pawn knight e5 it's hard to say that there's going to be a save uh, on the black end here certainly there's a lot of aggressive white pieces both bishops a knight a queen and these guys over here are not doing anything great so uh, we don't have bishop takes rook but instead d4 so now it's the pawn that's attacking the rook, but it's completely ignored. Knight g5, looking for mate again on h7. A wonderful move, certainly. And after it's actually captured, now we have the recapture, and now we have this rook come to, coming to life right here. All of the white pieces are contributing in some way. Well, I guess this rook not so much. I really don't see it coming over laterally, but it's actually turning out to be an expendable piece. And we see not only the knight falling, on that g5 square, but soon enough this rook too falls. Uh, pawn takes rook, and now bishop to f4. Before you know it, this game is going to be finished up. We're actually just 10 moves away. White is down a rook and a knight, but certainly has very aggressive pieces. Um, all, all of the pieces that white has right now are functioning in a great way. Again, my eye cannot help but just gravitate towards the queen side. Those guys are doing nothing. And what it is soon coming down to is a great uh, difference between attacking pieces versus defensive pieces. And uh, we're going to see that shortly right here. So the king decides to just make way and start to run. Uh, one thing to be aware of, and this would just be just throwing this quick example out. This, is, this would right here would be an example of a help mate. Rook to f2, would, f7 really doesn't have any meaning. It's just uh, allowing white to come up with the mate in two. This is just a neat little sacrifice to lure that king to that corner square and deliver mate. But that didn't happen in the game. Just something to be aware of, a nice little tactic. Instead, we have king f7. After queen check, king e7. All these moves right here essentially being forced. Pawn takes bishop check. Uh, rook takes is forced, otherwise pawn takes we're going to have this and that's leading to mate in one on the next turn so that's why we're having rook takes queen takes pawn check if the king goes back we're going to have uh, the rook playing to that h8 square delivering mate soon enough rook block bishop check looking to get that queen 
Queen takes rook, queen takes bishop, and now a nice quiet move right here, running all the calculations. We have rook to h7, looking for mate on c7. And fortunately, there is, well, unfortunately for black, there is no save at this point. There is no perpetual check. If something like this is tried, well, they could only be going on for so long. There is no more successful check, and uh, soon enough that king is going to be dead. There's just one last thing that white is essentially needing to watch out for at this point. After queen e5 check, king f1, black plays to the c6 square, and it may be very tempting to try and do something like bishop to e4 giving check. However, this king might get it get the crazy idea, or in fact good idea, to start running along these dark squares, and this attack can all of a sudden just go nowhere. So some precision is just needed in this final stage of the game, and it, it finishes up very nicely. A couple accurate checks, starting with queen e8, king b6, queen d8, king c6, and only after this square has been controlled do we now see bishop to e4, which is going to be leading to mate very quickly. If queen takes bishop, the game would fin finish up very nicely with queen to c7, and that's mate. But as it was in this game, after bishop to e4, black ends up resigning. So uh, that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care.